trust in you, Jesus. You're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. We're trusting in you. To lead us, we're on the right track. Oh, 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 oh. Wide open spaces for wide open eyes. We're looking ahead for the next big surprise. Oh, 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 oh. We trust, we trust, we trust in you. some things that you have that protect you. Maybe a helmet when you're riding a bike or scooter, or a seatbelt when you're in a car. Your house protects you from the weather. Your parents protect you. Police officers also protect you. Today, we're going to learn about a group of people who thought they were safe because they lived behind a wall. I have been studying more of God's battle strategy from the book of Joshua. I love how it seems that God has a surprising strategy in each story. He used spies, unexpected friendships, and unheard of battle plans to keep his opponents guessing. I plan to use all of that this week. Well, maybe not the spies and the battle plans, but I can definitely make a friend with someone whom I wouldn't normally talk to. Do you remember why I started thinking about strategy? I wanted to use my mind for God's glory. So the big picture question is, how can we glorify God? Do you remember the answer? We can glorify God by loving him and obeying him. Great, let's say that together again. How can we glorify God? We can glorify God by loving him and obeying him. Last time, we learned from the story about Joshua leading the Israelites into the promised land. Remember, Joshua is the sixth book of the Bible. This week, we will look at the next story in Joshua, the Battle of Jericho. Now, the title can be a bit misleading. 
There was so much preparation and strategy that happened before the battle. I learned so much. Let me share some of it with you. The Israelites finally arrived at the promised land of Canaan. But there was one problem. Other people were living there. God's people couldn't just walk in and set up their tents. They had to go to battle against their enemies, and they had to win. Joshua sent two spies into Jericho to see what it was like. The spy stayed at the house of a woman named Rahab. Rahab had heard about God and believed in him. She wanted to help his people. When the king of Jericho was looking for the spies, she hid the men on her roof. When it was safe for the spies to leave, Rahab said, Please be kind to my family since we have been kind to you. When you attack Jericho, please do not kill us. So the spies promised to keep Rahab and her family safe, and they left Jericho. Rahab tied a bright red rope in her window so the Israelites would know which house she lived in. The people in Jericho hid behind the strong walls of the city. God told Joshua he would conquer Jericho. To do that, Joshua would need to lead the people to march around the city one time each day for six days. On the seventh day, they would march around the city seven times and the priest would blow their trumpets. All the people would shout and the walls of Jericho would fall down. Then the Israelites could go into the city and take over. So Joshua commanded the people to carry the Ark of the Covenant and march around the city. The priest blew their trumpets. They marched around the city one time. Not one of the Israelites spoke or made a sound. On the second day, they silently marched around the city again and then returned to their camp. They did this every day for six days. On the seventh day, the Israelites got up early and marched around the city seven times. On the seventh time, when the priests blew their trumpets, Joshua said, Shout for the Lord has given you the city. So the people shouted and the wall fell down flat. The Israelites went into the city and captured it. They kept Rahab and her family safe because she helped the spies. God was with Joshua and everyone in the land knew of Joshua and what he had done. By faith, Rahab believed God would win the battle and she asked the spies to show mercy to her family and keep them safe. When the Israelites attacked Jericho, Rahab and her family received mercy and became a part of God's people. Jesus has won against sin and death. Everyone who trusts in Jesus receives mercy and becomes part of God's family forever. God is so creative and amazing. I love how he prepared the heart of Rahab. She heard about God and trusted in him. You know, it was no coincidence that the spies ended up at Rahab's house. Her quick thinking saved their lives, and they, in turn, saved her life and the lives of her family. Talk about unexpected but impactful friendships. In fact, God honored Rahab centuries later. In the first chapter of Matthew, her name is listed in the family line of Jesus. That's pretty special. And we can't forget about God's surprising battle plan. Silently marching around the city for six days and then seven times on the seventh day. Have you ever heard of such a strange battle plan? What about shields and weapons? Where is the element of surprise by sneaking up on them? You know that had to have been hard for the Israelites and very confusing for the people of Jericho. 
The people must have thought those Israelites had lost their minds. But the Israelites were obedient to God's plan, even when it didn't make sense. They just kept moving forward in faith. When they were finally able to shout, God brought down the walls of Jericho. Another amazing miracle. God received all the glory as those walls fell down. How can we glorify God? We can glorify God by loving him and obeying him. The story of Rahab and Jericho is a small example of what Jesus has done for us. By faith, Rahab believed God would win the battle, and she asked the spies to show mercy to her family and keep them safe. When the Israelites attacked Jericho, Rahab and her family received mercy and became part of God's people. Jesus has won against sin and death. Everyone who trusts in Jesus and obeys receives mercy and becomes part of God's family forever. But what if you have done a lot of bad things or had unkind thoughts? Will God still accept you into his family? Pastor Brian talks about that in our questions from kids video today. Let's see what he has to say. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Sophie from Cedar Rapids, Iowa asks, I've made some pretty bad choices in my life. I've said things I shouldn't and I've done things I shouldn't too. Will God still accept me into his family? That's a really good question. And you know, today's story should be an encouragement and really point us in the direction for an answer to that question. Because today we meet a woman named Rahab. And Rahab really was a woman who didn't do much good with her life. She would probably be able to relate with your question that she looked and said, man, I've done a lot of bad things. I've not been the person that I really know I should be. And will God forgive me? And what do we see happen though? that God spared her because she had faith in God. She believed that God would defeat her city and she asked his people to save her, to spare her from the judgment to come. And that's what happened. And so she spared from that. And then they bring her into their family. They bring her into the people of Israel and she lived with them from that day forward. And so we see this beautiful picture of how God can take even the worst person you can think of and because of his grace, because of his mercy to us, he can change us and he accepts us, not for who we are, but for who he has made us in Christ. And that's the key. God doesn't look at what you've done. That's all forgiven. The Bible says, as far as the East is from the West, that is removed from us. He looks at you when you've trusted in Jesus, he looks at you as righteous because God has given you Christ's righteousness, his obedience. And so he sees you as perfect. And so we have to remember that. That's a great encouragement to us, that we are fully accepted by God. And that also should prompt us to want to live for him in light of this reality. That should give us joy. That should give us gratitude. And we should want to live in a way that pleases God from that day forward. And one of the ways we do that is by sharing how others too can trust in God and experience his grace and his mercy and his love and his kindness. So who can you invite into God's family? God's grace is so amazing. It reaches to everyone, no matter what you have done. Isn't that great news to share? And because we have received such marvelous grace, we wanna offer it to others as well. Who is someone that you can show grace to? And as you are doing that, invite them into God's family. I hope you will make plans to do that this week. I also hope you have been practicing our key passage. Repeating it is so important to help you remember it. Let's march in place while we say it together. We can imagine we are the Israelites marching around Jericho. Are you ready? Stand up, here we go. The Lord is the one who will go before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or abandon you. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Deuteronomy 31.8. 
I have to think the Israelite army had these words in their minds as they marched around the city of Jericho behind the Ark of the Covenant. God went before them in that battle, and he continues to go before us today. As the walls of Jericho fell, the Israelites must have praised God for his power. God gave them victory. The Israelites obeyed, and God got the glory. How can we glorify God? We can glorify God by loving him and obeying him. Well, we have reached the end of our time today. You are so loved. I am praying for you and your family. Tune in next week. The Israelites still have more battles ahead of them, and we'll see what other unexpected strategies God uses as he goes ahead of his people. Have an awesome week. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind away? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing, but now. Alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my turn till I met you. You called my name and I. Shelter, I was an orphan, and you call me.